Hi, Nick from Boom Windsurfing here. And today I want to talk about fitness in our sport of windsurfing. Um, I've got my tra trainer, Sam, here. Um, just a little bit of history. To me, um, when, you know, fitness and windsurfing, it's not about pro sailors or um, sponsored sailors. It's about normal, you know, normal guys and girls who want to get the most out of their sport. It's quite a demanding sport. And to be able to do it well and progress in it, you need, you need to be serious about your fitness, I feel. And um, also to try and avoid injury, which is obviously nobody wants. Um, so for this reason, I, I, you know, I do fitness myself. I've always been keen. But about a year ago, I, I, I um, decided to take it a bit further and, and get a remote coach, which is how I found, found Sam. Um, and I think this has got me enjoying my sport more, progressing better and um, keeping the injuries away. Um, so I asked Sam to join us um, and he's from a, a company called Kings of the World Frontier to chat, to chat about this. And maybe Sam could tell us a little bit about what you do and what your company does. Yeah, cheers, mate. Um, yeah, we're, we're Kings of the Wild Frontier. We've got a couple of gyms across across the UK. We've got one down in West London and then another one, which is really recent, up in the Peak District in Bakewell. Um, and, yeah, I suppose we've, we, we kind of work with everything from um, racing drivers in motorsport all the way to kind of endurance athletes, triathletes, ultra runners. And then I suppose windsurfing slots in the middle somewhere, <laughs> that whole kind of spectrum of athletes. And yeah, yeah we, we, we aim to kind of treat everybody the same, keep it as bespoke as possible, um, take it on a case by case basis, all these training programs um, and aim to give it the kind of everybody the best opportunity to be the best at what they want to be good at. You know, there's no, there's no one size fits all. And I think that's our kind of, a little bit of our USP to what we're what we're doing, really. Yeah, that's 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 good. I think I think from my point of view, the, the advantage of having a trainer and someone who, even remotely, you can talk to. I talk to you regularly, um, and you can tailor things to me and yeah, fit what I want to do and, and what I'm capable of. Um, yeah, so that's great. So I had a few questions, Sam, and just maybe we'll go through those. Um, one of the big things about windsurfing, um, and part of the reason why I I really I'm passionate about the fitness side is that it's so weather dependent you know so if you're a, a keen shortboarder like myself you want to go out in waves and windy conditions it can be sometimes it can be months without good conditions you know and you're not out sailing regularly other times you're out two or three times a week um so it's really hard to be consistent and keep your fitness through the sport um yeah how do you how do you cope with that as a as a, as a trainer you know with a sport like that it's, 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 I mean, it's down to communication more than anything else. Um, I suppose you, you communicate with your athlete as much as you can to help um, put them in the best possible shape to perform on the day in the way that they want to perform, you know. And, like, the biggest thing you want to do, especially with you guys and windsurfers, is help prevent any injuries creeping in. And, like, as people get older, as people go through life and like making sure those, 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 those quieter times when you're not with surfing as necessarily that you can make gains, but then you also can make sure you're making the body super robust so that it can react when the weather's good, you know, and go again. So, um, I mean, the biggest thing is communication hundred yeah. percent. Um, and, and, um, I mean, with, with all these sports nowadays, it's it's very much kind of um, everything's changing all the time. We've just gone through a, a period of the pandemic where every every week it was different, you know. And I know it was a bit of a downtime, but, but every week we kind of changed from for all our athletes. And then um, coming out of the pandemic and changing the goalposts again, and you know, we, we we've really tried to focus on the communication side, like organizing the communication so that everybody's on the same kind of wavelength um from a from a like a physical training side of things you know um try and focus on a couple of key elements like just just from a training side that i think we might get onto that in a minute but like making sure everyone's endurance is at the right level to, to then making sure that strength is at the right level and mobility is at the right level so they're super robust for when they do need to kind of 
turn on the performance, um, whether they're just having a smash around on their own or they're in a competition or in whatever kind of capacity they're doing it. Yeah, and that's that was sort of my next question was um, what what do you think do you feel are the most important points of fitness that particularly apply to windsurfing? I think you you know when I do when I do a session, I record it on my um, on my watch, you know, as, as a windsurfing session. So it goes into our um, you know our training um, uh, yeah. program, and so you see that you see my my heart rate and my output, yeah. as it were. and yeah. You know, so you higher than riding a bike, basically, mostly. Yeah, so that's so the heart rate and the and the and, and that kind of thing is similar in many yeah. ways, I think, to, to that. Um probably riding more more like riding a mountain bike than riding a road bike, I'd say, because yeah, yeah, it, you know, your 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 heart rates are yeah, yeah, the, the, you're really pushing the limit at like times, especially <laughs> when it's windy or where you've got challenging yeah. conditions. So really, yeah, the question was um yeah, what, what do you think are the most important things that apply to windsurfing and how does that compare with any other sports that that you coach, you know, that you deal with any other athletes? So um, most important parts are, and we've seen it on your training peaks, is that, that um, it's quite um, interval-based when you're actually out, out, out on the um, water. So we get like lots of peaks and troughs in heart rate. Um, yeah. so elements of like, maybe, maybe, um, hit sessions are good, like quite polarized training. So, so high, high intensity work then and, and easier work than high intensity work than easier work. You could, you could loop in some Tabata training as well, which is kind of 40 seconds on 20 seconds off stuff when it comes to strength side of things, which is another element that you can bring in, um, comparisons to other sports, um, I mean, we can compare it to different types of training, which is what I just did with the tablets and stuff and the hit and all that, so that those sort of things. I suppose from a from a comparison to racing driving, maybe it's, there's probably certain elements that are similar as well, just because you're, you're steering something. There's a skill based elements as well. Um, lots of little things to think about. You've got forces that you're you're resisting against as well. So in most sport, you're obviously resisting against G forces. You guys are resisting against the wind and, uh, and then the other variables of the ocean and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, it, to tell you what would be quite interesting is it, and what we found from racing drivers is they actually hold their breath through um, high G forces. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if 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 we ever had like a um, uh, like that we're able to track breath rate breathing rate and stuff like that with wind surfers if that was a similar thing as well it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't surprise me i'd probably close my yeah. eyes sometimes as well because <laughs> when you brace when you brace it's sort of like a way of like you just shut everything off you know <laughs> and go yeah. through through go through the motions <laughs> yeah. so it'd be, be quite interesting it, but it makes you slightly hypoxic which then might then spike the heart rate you know because when yeah. you're trying to recover yeah I mean, because I mean, you know, with windsurfing, you know, if especially when you're learning things new, like I mean, it could be just going fast, but it, it, you know, learning jibes and jumps and different things. Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, you've got to, you've you've got to wipe out. You've got to you've got to crash as part of yeah. the process. You, you, it's very hard to do it otherwise. And um, yeah, and it's it's that moment of crashing, but then it's the recovery. You know, you've got to recover the rig. You've got to spin yeah. around. <laughs> If there's waves coming on top of you as well, it's all like you know intensified. Yeah. Um, and it is that's when it really feels like a, a mega workout, you know. Um, for yeah. sure. Uh, and temperature as well, temperature of the water as well. Like, you know, if, if if I imagine if the water's colder, you're gonna have like a bit more vaso um dilation as well. So it's slightly, slightly maybe uh there'll be an effect on heart rate as well from that um and getting out of the water as quick as possible and getting warm again you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so next question i have um do you have any tips uh for somebody who is perhaps looking for a trainer um um but they're not necessarily looking for a trainer sorry at this point but they're looking to, to get themselves ready um 
better more ready for windsurfing by doing some sort of program that would help them it could be a self-taught program or something that they they, they sign up to an app or something um and yeah would help their windsurfing but could you sort of give an example of two or three regular things um that would give some consistency yeah. and really help their fitness levels i'd say i'd say the first thing you, you need to check is like how your hips sit to a certain extent because when you're when you guys are surfing um a lot of it comes lower back glutes posterior chain um and i, I mean in the past like guys have come in off, off the water and said oh my lower back oh, it aches here aches there and that sort of thing that might be because the hips are kind of tilted one way or the other they've got really tight Carbs or really high yeah. hamstrings is putting extra force through the back and they're not being able to turn on those, those big ass muscles in the bum. Um, so making sure the hips are in a neutral position, not anterior rotated, not posterior rotated. So like just checking in with, you can even stand it in front of the mirror and see which like your boxer shorts, whether they're like this down to the front or like yeah. this at the back, just to see how your hips are tilted. Because ideally we want them to be level so to, if you do find that your hips are anterior rotated, which is tipping forward, we want, to, we want to loosen off the quads as much as possible to kind of bring them level. Because by the time we bring them level, it's going to take off all of the, um, the pressure on all the discs and the vertebrae in the lower back. Because um, if you think about it, if it's tipped up like this, then you're going to have pinch, maybe a bit more pinching in the, in the lower vertebrae yeah. of all the discs, which is going to put more force into it. And it's going to... It's going to stop you from activating glutes, hamstrings, and that sort of thing, which is what you need quite quite a lot, really, when so, you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, that so, sounds. So, I mean, that sounds yeah, like on. it's position. You know, so that's your basic body positions and and um, yeah. getting the right muscles working. So that sounds to me like um, strength and mobility work. Yeah. So stage which, one is mobility, hundred percent, yeah. making sure that's all that's all sorted. Um, Could that be yoga? And then, is things yeah. like yoga and pilates and things like this yeah Fritzing. yeah 100 percent. like go going through like some some yoga flows like even if it's just before you get on the board you know um some little activation exercise things like that kind of on a day-to-day -day basis i would 100 percent run, be running some sort of like base endurance work um whether that's on a bike whether it's out running uh whether it's on a row machine obviously your row machine you know, you're, you're covering full body and it's probably all the muscles that you're you're using when you're sailing. Yeah. So um, the row machine is pretty useful if you can get hold of one. Um, swimming, again, another, another useful tool because it's, again, full body. Um, whereas cycling and um, running necessarily, maybe they're just, maybe they're a bit kind of isolated compared to the other, those other ones. And then from a strength perspective, um, again, you, you know, you, you've got your full body exercises, <clears throat> push, pull. I think a lot of, a lot of focus is put on push quite a lot. Whereas I think pull is super important for you guys. I think pull is what, like maybe 60, 40, um, kind of on, on the important scale. So focusing a bit more on pull stuff, so chin ups, horizontal rows, bent over rows, things like that. Yeah. Um, and then you kind of your holds, so you got your planks, um, your unstable planks, so maybe on a wobble board or something like that. Um, and then kind of yeah, just the overall fit, overall core strength side of things, basically. Um, but but making sure it's more to do with stability and making sure the hips are in the right place, then keep yeah. learning and learning it. You know, that's really that's really interesting. I think you're right. If your body's not lined up, and I think. When I've had injuries or felt like out of sync and everything else, it, I think it's because you know the hips aren't right or something in my back or you know I'm not in tune. You know, there's some muscles that aren't like balanced enough. Um, yeah. So I think I think you're right, and especially and it, it, with something like windsurfing, it can be very intense. So you get found out quite quickly. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, Is it? Is it is it a regular thing for people to to warm up like you kind of like people that no um... <laughs> I think I think I in my experience most enthusiasts the warm up is rigging rigging the you know 
you might run down yeah, the beach and which just is pretty which is pretty demanding you rig the, yeah you're rigging all the gear and then you carry it to the beach and where we sail yeah. in uh in east lothian in uh, near edinburgh is a bit of a walk down a, a path through the dunes so yeah. you know that's in my experience that's probably most people's warm-up <laughs> i think a few yeah. guys do a bit more <laughs> But I think you're right. I think activating the muscles, if people could even do a very basic, you know, I try yeah. to do the Spider-Man type things that you show me where you're, you're yeah. trying to activate the, get things moving and get those bigger muscles sort of mm. working up a wee bit. Um, because yeah. you're straight out there into the, the wind. And as I say, quite often it's windy and you, you're, uh, yeah. you're putting your body through quite a bit. So it doesn't make sense. Um, yeah. that, that's, that's great, Sam. That's great. And I think, what I'm hoping is this is just a little bit of a an intro thing. Um, hopefully, yeah. we'll give people a little bit of an idea of what we're talking about. Um, and I, we've got some. We've talked about some ideas. Would you be up for doing at some point doing a weekend where yeah, we could maybe combine it with some windsurf coaching, um, yeah. but where we have some fitness program as well. Yeah, and then hundred percent. I know you windsurf a little bit, so you you could do. Some we go somewhere warm somewhere warm well <laughs> we can try <laughs> well at least do it in the warmer months perhaps but um yeah i think that'd be a great idea um and i'm sure we'll see what interest there is and um yeah and then to oh yeah to conclude well there's one more question i heard that you'd uh, met a famous windsurfer yeah ages ago um i it's the only person i've i worked in formula one for like traveling around the world with drivers um, from 2013 to like 2019. Yeah. And the, literally there's only one person I ever like swallowed my pride and went and had a photo with and it was Robbie Nash. Um, oh, amazing. And yeah, uh, he's a big fan, isn't he? Uh, the oh, he was with Red Bull like pretty much every race. He absolutely loved it, especially when it was like kind of in that side of the world. Yeah, um, that's very cool. For windsurfers, that's like, you know, that's... I can't find the picture anywhere though. Like I remember it, and I remember it happening. And I've searched like all my windsurf mates that I sent it to on Facebook, everywhere. I can't find it. Anywhere. Well, when you find it, we'll we'll, we'll share it, share it on the on Boom because um, I think that's very cool. Um, and then lastly, lastly to conclude, I think um, anyone watching, put any questions in the comments, and if if they're relevant, you know, to Sam's expertise, we'll 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 get an answer from him. Um, yeah. and also it'd be great if people could share what they do and how they find mm -hmm. their, their own particular angle towards mm -hmm. fitness helps mm -hmm. them win surf and that would be brilliant. So that's great. Thank you, Sam. Thank you very much. And no worries. Thanks for having me. Hopefully we can do some Time. more stuff like this if, if, if people like it. Thank you. hundred percent. Cheers, mate.